It is October 15th, Vietnam Moratorium Day. Tonight, most of this program will be devoted to a report on the moratorium, its observance, its opposition. This was the look of the land today from one coast to the other. Chicago Civic Center, scene of other protests in recent days. A huge crowd assembled during the lunch hour. This is Wall Street in New York City. Trinity Church and prayers for peace. Washington, D.C. These are students of the Catholic University of America. Their song, America the Beautiful. Kansas, the Bethel College bell tolls every four seconds for Americans killed in Vietnam. Most of the well-to-do parents of these students voted for Richard Nixon and before him, Barry Goldwater. The students are not the type who demonstrate, but they are concerned about Vietnam. And they devoted part of their school day to debating the war. I think that we should be there to stop the communists. It sounds corny and whatever you might say, but they are going to start taking you over the weaker, weaker South Asian countries. And then finally, you'd have two sides to the world. You'd have the communists and you'd have the free countries. I think that the people in Vietnam do not want us in there. Most of the people, people who know, even the farmers, because they want to end the war. And if it takes the United States to leave, they're going to end the war. And it will take the United States to leave to end it. You seem to think that we're doing all the killing, and we're not. The Viet Cong go into the little village at night, little villages at night, and make sneak attacks on the population, and they kill everyone that's loyal to the Vietnam government. That's right. So that's why, if we leave Vietnam, all these mayors that have supported in the little towns that have supported the United States, and th they'll just be slaughtered, like it's happened before. But is this going to justify our staying in there and having thousands and thousands and thousands of more men killed? To prevent many more thousands that will be killed, yes. Well, I think that uh, something of a bigger question is this that involves the whole nation. should be decided by uh, the nation, perhaps through a national referendum. I don't know whether the question uh, of withdrawing the troops um, should be decided just by the political leaders. I mean, I think it should be by the whole people of the country, but I think the indecisiveness is really hurting us uh, quite a bit. Wall Street is not afraid of peace. Those chants were heard in the canyons of generally conservative Wall Street in New York. The sounds of protest have continued there since 8.30 this morning. At noon, one of the speakers was Bill Moyers, former press secretary to President Lyndon Johnson. Because of my own experience, perhaps I have too much sympathy for the new president to demand of him more than his duty to his office will permit. I can only wish him well and concede that he needs more time than he has had in extricating us from a predicament which is at least as complicated as it is despised. I would urge the president to remember Winston Churchill's definition of democracy as the occasional necessity of deferring to the opinions of other people. The people will trust the leader who trusts them, and it is for such trust in and from government that Americans are longing today. Knotheads that are promoting this thing would like to see us take some action against them so they could pose as martyrs. This is a man in Kansas. He hates the war, but is deeply disturbed by dissent. For him, as for so many in the country, the question is, can a moratorium do any good? Do these young people really know what they're doing? The young people in this report are from Bethel College, an old but small Mennonite school in Newton, Kansas. And in this tightly conservative farm community, the most radical group are members of the Peace Club. They talk the faculty into suspending classes, but they are moving against the grain, and they know it. The people that make up the town or community or culture that you live in is very aware that a deviation threatens the past. And like I said before, I think, you know, the past is a very important thing here in Kansas. 
The words are disturbing to Newton, whose broad, quiet main street looks like a movie set. The land has been good to these people, but behind it all is the nagging fact of the war. And the Peace Club has forced the issue over the past few weeks by confronting churches and civic groups in the area, asking them for moratorium day support. The town, like the country, is deeply divided, but the overwhelming majority is against the protest. All we need are a few crazies to get with these groups, and we've really had it. Well, that's Mr. Commander, what we're going to do. The Black Book, the Bible, says that you shall pray. Prayer changes everything. It certainly doesn't say action, because action leads to war and violence. Also, this uh, whole thing has been instigated by the Communist Party in the United States. All you have to do is read any of the Communist literature for the past several months, and they have been promoting this thing. They set the date. It's their work. Their dukes all over the country have taken it up. This old bell hasn't rung for 60 years. Now the Bethel College students are ringing it every four seconds, once for every American killed in Vietnam. But the fact is the rally and the teach-ins on this campus today are anticlimactic. The real issue here has been joined for weeks, as people have been forced to examine their personal positions on the war and what to do about it. And on this cold, gray Kansas morning, it's clear not many people in this part of the country think a moratorium day is the answer. This is Gregory Jackson at Bethel College in Newton, Kansas.